or darajat, the wahid, the singular is darajat. Allah Almighty God is saying, He raises the ranks of those who believe and those who have knowledge in only a certain amount of degrees or a certain amount of status. Here Allah Ta'ala says, darajat, many ranks. Wallahu bima ta'amaduna habib. And verily Allah knows of what the things you do. He is khabir. He is aware. He has khabir. Now there are many verses, virtues of the Prophet Sallallahu hadith about knowledge. In particular, I want to mention one, and then one of the sayings of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood. The Prophet Sallallahu said, in relation to the Ayat of Quran Park, his, uh, this is related by Abdullah ibn Abbas as well, he says that the Prophet Sallallahu said that the rank of a scholar, the rank of those who have knowledge among you, compared to the rank of a normal believer, is the rank I have amongst you. So the rank of a scholar amongst the normal, normal people, the ordinary masses, is the rank that the Prophet said I have amongst you. And the Prophet says further that the Prophets do not leave any dinner or dinar. That was the equivalent currency at that time, which was the dinar was the gold standard and the dinar was the silver standard in the time of Prophet Sallallahu and obviously inheritance, miras was given in terms of money. So the Prophet is so talking about the important knowledge that the Prophets do not in, give away, do not leave behind dinam or dinar. They do not leave a, 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 a monetary or materialistic things. Instead, the Prophet said, they leave behind knowledge. And then the Prophet said, Al ulama wa rasatul anbiya. That the ones who are my highest, the ones who will have. This inheritance are the scholars. We talk about so many different types of inheritance that people uh, are proud about. But what inheritance can be more personal boast about, to be more pride, more, find more pride about than having the inheritance of the ulama, which is knowledge. And this is the inheritance of the Prophet Like Imam Rahmatullah says, what is knowledge? He says knowledge is that which is not about much recital, it's not about much repetition. It's not about a person who can stand on the corner of the streets and tell you hadith after hadith after hadith, or ayat after ayat after ayat of the Brown Park, because unfortunately, as I walk on that side, there are people out there who will stand on the corner of the streets or stand outside and do not understand the respect or knowledge, do not fall for these eloquent people. The Prophet mentioned about this, he's got off this, is that these people are the eloquent hypocrites. To tell ayat after ayat and repeat Quran, hadith after hadith, will not tell you any meaning about that, the background. Instead, Imam Mahdi Rahmatullah said, and is read by his uh, um, teacher, Imam Waki Rahmatullah, lay, that knowledge is a light whoever Allah Almighty puts in the heart of And it's transmitted from heart to heart. It's not one moment's repetition. So if you see a person who is quoting you many ayats and many hadiths, and he is telling you so many things, you need to stop a person and say, please, please stop there and explain exactly these eyes and the verse of these eyes and exact definition of these eyes. Because if you can't do that, he's not knowledgeable. Because we can get anyone to memorize. If you get a small child to memorize a few hadiths without knowledge, doesn't mean he has knowledge. Knowledge is a light that Allah gives. This is what Imam Ar Rahmatullah said. Sina Abdullah ibn Masood, he mentioned this verse, he read this verse out. That Allah Ta'ala raises the ranks of those who believe and those who are knowledgeable amongst him in many degrees. He said that when he, he read this ayat, this should be a motivation for you to go out there and seek knowledge. For verily, Allah Almighty, through this ayat, is showing that the, the people who are learned, they are different. Allah Almighty, Almighty says, Hal yastawil lazina ya'lamun, wal lazina ya'lamun. Allah Ta'ala asks the question, are those who know and those who know, not know the same? They cannot be the same. Imam Zahmudan in his book Yamin al Sadat, he mentioned Hadith of Prophet, he said that when it comes to the mujahida, when it comes to the struggle of the alim, of the scholar, compared to the ordinary person against Shaitan, he says he is 70,000 70, times more stronger. Because he fights with his knowledge, he fights with his yaqeen, he fights with the certainty, the knowledge that he has to make it close to Allah Almighty. And that is the main purpose of knowledge. The main objective of a person seeking knowledge is him trying to become aware, having the ma'rifah, having the awareness of Allah Almighty. 
and get close to him and learn about him. And all different ways you know about him. Whether it's through the, the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether it's through the way of Sallallahu Alaihi and reading their stories, understanding their lives, understanding their examples, whether it's fiqh, whether it's inheritance, whatever time, knowledge is it's beneficial. Now how do we get to know knowledge and then act upon knowledge and wisdom? One of the great scholars, Imam um, Badwi, uh, Mustafa al-Badwi, he mentioned this in, uh, in a conference about Imam Abu al-Khadad, Rahmatullah, Imam Alwi al-Khadad, Rahmatullah, it's beautiful how he says this. And he says that the way you look at knowledge is first there is data. Data is raw. When you collect this data, it becomes information. And then that information, when it's organized, it becomes knowledge. And then that, when that knowledge is applied in practice, that becomes wisdom. So basically, it, it talks about data first that thing into information and how you transform all that into knowledge and then how that knowledge can be applied and that becomes wisdom. Another great scholar says that wisdom is actually the end result of a person of knowledge. And the way you apply knowledge, the great scholar, the way you apply knowledge, and this is a beautiful quote from another scholar, he says that when you apply knowledge, the way knowledge should be applied is he applied knowledge at the appropriate time, at the appropriate place, and he has appropriate objective for that. So he has the right attention, he does it at the appropriate time and appropriate place. He knows when and where and how to um, deliver his message to the people, understanding what that place is. But that is what wisdom is. Using the knowledge appropriately. So not just doing knowledge is important, it's also understanding how to apply that. And that is the great of the scholar. And the Almighty says to the Prophet, Innama Allah min ibadi We say that we fear Allah Almighty. What Allah Almighty is saying. We say no doubt. That there's exceptions as well. The way the Inma also is that only these people, these people are the ones who are the elite and they've been ruled out, they're singled out for this purpose only. Inama Yaksha Allah. No doubt the ones who fear Allah, who khashiyat, who have the taqwa, khashiyat, and fear of Allah Almighty, men ibadi amongst his slaves are the Ulama of this country. So amongst the slaves of Allah Almighty, ones who fear him most, it doesn't mean no one else feeds him, but the ones who will be selected and know this properly, know the insides and outsides of what is to be Allah Almighty, or what is taqwa. Taqwa is to know all those things that are halal, all those things are haram. What are those things that we do in Islam, what are the things we don't do in Islam. These are the, those things that Allah Almighty, the borders of these things, understanding of where the limits are, or where we are not allowed to transgress, or what we're supposed to do, what we're not supposed to do. All these things are taqwa, to re- and that's just not shallow taqwa. To understand that what we're supposed to do in our lives, what we're not supposed to do. Come back on our point. Why is knowledge a power? It's because the person who's all under me, he has such a beautiful thing that I've given him, that light, that wealth that I can never ever go over. He goes to my call that Imam has Ali Rita Anhu mentioned, he says about knowledge. He says that no, the knowledge is not an ordinary thing. He mentions two things. He says that when it comes to your wealth, you guard your wealth. But yet, when you have knowledge, knowledge protects you. So you protect your wealth, you guard your wealth. You take so many means and go out there to make sure that you can protect your wealth. And you still don't know, you still have guarantee and certainty that you can fulfill that. You could be in a rich state, you could be in a happy state, you could be in a content state in regards to your wealth, but the next day it could go away, just like that. You could be robbed of that. Even though you took all the precautions and necessary means to protect yourself, but with knowledge, it's what Allah God gives you. Once that's there with you, you can take it away. No one can take it away from you. It's inside you. You've learned that knowledge, if you acquire that, it protects you instead. And then he says, that wealth is something that when you spend it, it decreases. So when you spend it, it decreases. But knowledge is that, that when you spend that, it increases. So that is one thing in the world, if someone asks you a question, what is that one thing in the world that everything we try to spend, it goes away for us, it decreases, and we have less of that amount from the beginning with whether it's money or everything, what is that one thing that when we spend it, when we give it, it increases the only one thing and that has left us with is knowledge. And that's what Imam Ali said, Hazrat Ali. Because when a person has knowledge, when he teaches that one person, 
Then the person will teach all people in the Kariyan and the Sankar Jariyan. As the Prophet mentioned in Hadith, Sahih Muslim, in Kitab al Musayyah, the Prophet mentioned, Sayyidina Abu Hurairah mentioned this, there are three things that only are left behind when the person dies. Sadqat al Jariyah, al Munafi, and the Ulad Saleh, who do Jat Mullah, who pray for him. And here, the second thing mentioned is the Ilm al the beneficial knowledge. So even after someone dying, the beneficial knowledge that he gives him, that will carry on. So if a person learns some knowledge and a person passed away, and that person who learned the knowledge, he passed to another person, and he passed that person passed to another person, and it kept on going on from generation to generation, person after person after person, the person who died in the grave, the son of grave, he gets punished. Why is the church is talking today is because today we need to make sure the youth of our generation, which I told us away weeks ago, empowerment of our youth. One of the greatest tools to empower our youth is to put in their mind the importance of knowledge. As I mentioned in the last few weeks to you, just to refresh your memories, weeks a couple weeks ago, one of the goals of Imam al-Hazali, and this is very important about the psychology of how we bring up our children, how we bring our generation up. What did he say? He said that seven years spent playing with your children, seven years spent making your children learn and educate them with knowledge. And then seven, become seven, for your seven years, become their supporters, become their advisors. And then at the age of 21, let them go. So that'll be nothing. So for all your resources behind, that for the first seven years, you please that little heart. You make a life nice for them. You give them all the luxuries, you give them the confidence, and you, 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 you talk, pray with them, and you become a friend to them. And then when they get the age of 10, 7 and 14, what do you do? You educate them. You give them all the means necessary to educate what's possible. And then they get back to the age of 14 for the next 7 years, to the age of 21, what do you do? You become an advisor. All the important decisions they want to make in life, you make sure you're there for them. So that they make it so that afterwards, every single decision they make, they will understand because they will have the backing of yours, they will have the maturity and that you have given them, they will have the counseling and advice that you have given them. So that by the age they reach at 21, they'll be mature in themselves. That is what we're lacking today. The maturity of our youth. And we need to really consider this. The reason why I did this topic today is something, uh, I was back in college days and it struck me that I was in the lecture of uh, maths. We're doing the maths and stuff with this. And the teacher mentioned about uh, how maths, uh, the mathematics is power. And I asked her, how is that power? And then she showed me you know, the stats about you know, people who are going through the career of maths, how different, different uh, careers, perhaps you can take, whether it's accountancy, whether it's going in be a sister, whether it's a lawyer, even in geography, even in history, how maths is so important, and how that being a good mathematician helps you, and that is the key to you becoming successful in life. And I just came back to my mind after so many years of that, that if this is something that which is Dunyavi knowledge, which also we can follow the knowledge, if that it makes us successful there, what about the knowledge of Deen? What about the knowledge of sacred Deen? This is to make a person successful in this world, is becoming powerful for him and respect for him. And no doubt the true respect of the person in this world is when he knows knowledge. And the knowledge all out of all the knowledge, remember learning knowledge, becoming a lawyer, becoming a doctor, becoming an engineer, doing any sort of knowledge which is beneficial for yourself, beneficial for the people around you, that is good. For the best out of that knowledge, the foundation for that knowledge should be the knowledge of the deen. So how a person who knows the basic knowledge of deen as well, and he becomes the knowledge of the, the world of sciences, that is good. But we need to continue this one. And especially nowadays, we have youth who will be attacked from many, many different sides because of the lack of that knowledge. And we look back at the great scholars from the community, how they protected their deen, and how they understood that deen, Today, for example, we are attacked by basic questions of the deen. Basic questions about the deen, about the sifat ilahi, about act, talking about Allah Almighty, understanding your Lord, understanding your God. It's not easy just now to go walk around and say to people, well, we just believe in Allah. And as someone asks the grief of that, we don't have any grief. And the last thing I want to say to you is a time very short, and you need to understand how important the knowledge was in the past, and how even the young people could give it to the Baba. You mentioned, about Imam Abu Hanifa who is young age. And he says that was the area and this atheist, he used to um, ask questions to people and no one could answer the questions. And everyone was very worried that he used to win people in arguments and no one could win him. So Imam Hanifa as a young 
student of knowledge, he goes to that uh, place, and no one recognizes that mandate because he's a student of knowledge. And uh, again, according to the seminar routine, he gets up and says, Is there anyone who wants to challenge me in the orchestra? Imam Munifa, Yubin Jung, gets up. Only about 12, 13 years old. And he laughs and says, You know, so, so, many, many men of knowledge have come from your religion of mm-hmm. Islam and challenge me, and they not answer my challenge. What are you going to do? So I want to, I'm, I'm, I'll face your challenge, ask me the question. Okay. So you're ready to be humiliated. So three questions you have. The first ask the question, ask is, where is your Allah? What was before your God? And what is he doing right now? Difficult question. And you have to ask these questions and many people know how to answer them. He said, the first question you ask is, who is before your God? Can you count the temple? He said that home. He started counting to ten. He said, Can you count backwards? He count backwards. And look at this the scholarship, look at the look at the uh, intelligence and sharpness. He said, stop at one. He said time was before one. He said, you know. He said exactly our Imam a Muslim is there has to be the one creator. For the one creator, if that is not, is not in existence, you take that one away, it's zero. And then he says that tell me in any mathematical equation. Can you take anything out of zero? Whether you times zero, multiply zero, take away zero, add zero plus zero, it's impossible mathematically that from zero, from nothing, something come out. There has to be something, you have to have the one. And that's why we also believe that there has to be the one. That's the first answer to your question. The second is, where is my Lord? He takes the ball of milk. And he puts the milk inside there, and he tells me, can you locate exactly where the milk is in one location? So I can't. It's exactly, we don't say Allah Almighty is in one place. The power, the essence of Allah Almighty is, is everywhere. You cannot locate Allah Almighty. And your final question, before I answer that, I want to change, change location. I want to change uh, places. He says, if you're standing on a high, uh, on a high elevation, he comes back down, and he comes up and he says, what do you want, so what was the last question? So my last question was to you, is what is Allah Ta'ala doing now? What is your Lord doing now? What is God doing now? He said, what is God doing now? My God has just made you de- be defeated in this debate and put you down this level and he put me back up to you now. And that was his just now. He's done that to his degree. And then it was uproar and everyone ex- admitted that Imam Bunifa <coughs> defeated this racist. Why was this? The reason why I'm telling this today is because they were given that sort of knowledge about the Akkad, about their beliefs, about their understanding. They had that sharpness that they were ready to stand up to the challenge. On the society that time. And today we have many, many challenges by you. They're going out there. We need to give them opportunities. Alhamdulillah, in our mission, we have opportunities. You can come to us. Alhamdulillah, we have a year course that, Alhamdulillah, the first year course has been completed in our mission for the foundation to Alam course. Second year is about to start. Inshallah, more people will come. Everyone's interested. Let myself know. Inshallah, other teachers as well. Alhamdulillah, we had 35 to 40 students, both boys and girls. So, wherever the opportunities arise in the mission, we need to come. Remember, Shaitan is the one who, one who hates the student of knowledge. It says that when Shaitan meets his little devils, the greatest thing he thinks is act of virtue amongst him is the one who gets the student of knowledge off track so he does not learn any knowledge. The one who diversifies by diverse his creep up so he does not learn knowledge. So we need to get our youngest in the masjid and try our best, our youth, to push them. The, the, the path is very difficult, so we need to do that. Finally, I want to ask you today is, Alhamdulillah, as you all know, every single year, for the last three, four years, in our Moshe, we've been doing a Hajj seminar with your du'as. And this year, inshallah, I want to do the Hajj seminar, but at the moment, um, I've not been told as many people as possible who are going. I only have a few people. I just want to make an announcement that if anyone's interested, inshallah, we'll also do a Hajj seminar again, which inshallah will be a couple of presentations, you get handouts out, and be a lecture about doing the full Hajj, and inshallah, practice how to do the Ikram, Inshallah, we're looking in the next couple of weeks of uh, organizing this on the weekend. The possible date, I've been told so far, is maybe the 13th, 14th of July. So everyone who's going to hike this year, please, can you meet myself? Inshallah, Rujal, uh, after what they do, I'll give my number of contact, and then inshallah, we try to arrange the best possible date. But we need to know your departure date, so going to hike. And inshallah, according to that, we'll do the Hajj seminar, which has been very successful for the last few years. Jazakum Allah. Please comment, like, subscribe and share.